John Avalon is a political analyst with a lot of experience. John Avalon is the former Giuliani speechwriter and communications director and author of this book, Independent Nation. I want to talk to John Avalon, who's a, a centrist analyst for us. What's healthy is the candidates reaching out across the aisle and declaring their own independence. And does saying, that no. matter to the voters? Sure it does, because it's a sign of independence. It creates credibility. It's a sign that you're not going to get politics as usual. And that's the thing that voters are really so frustrated and disgusted with, this divisiveness, this predictability in our politics. And when candidates have courage to reach across the political aisle, when they take positions that listen to their own conscience, rather than just by playing to the base or being locked in lockstep with the ideological activists of their own party, that's when politics gets interesting, that's when politics gets exciting, and that's when independents feel like they've got people speaking for them. Would you point to, as is Teddy Roosevelt your, yeah, your model? Teddy Roosevelt, 100 years ago, takes, he's a reform Republican, he takes on the big business base of the Republican Party, he starts the environmental movement, he alienates some folks on the extreme, but he wins over the progressive Democrats, wins with the largest mandate up to that point. That's the model, that's what John McCain harkens back to, that's what Harry Truman did, JFK, there's a strong heritage here. Let me ask you this. Are you reading this from a card or something? Because you're very good at this. Independents have been so angry at the Bush administration that they're totally alienated from the Republican brand. What McCain's got to do is rebrand the Republican Party in his image. What Obama needs to do is what he did in the primaries, is reach out, win independents back, keep making his postpartisan case and saying that the Bush party has just alienated independents because they're fundamentally polarizing in their politics. Take a chance on the future of America. You're going to have a lot of cynical professional partisans who whisper in both candidates' ears and say, hey, listen, pay the, pay the youth vote lip service, but they're not going to let you down on election day. Don't pay much attention. Take a chance on the youth vote, because it's backed up by the data. They are turning out this year. And if you do it in a genuine way, if you respect the youth folks' intelligence, you may find yourself really rewarded. You've got organized groups, on, especially on the web, Republicans for Obama and Democrats for McCain. And they're really making this election a healthy competition for voters in the center. What we've got is the opposite of a play to the base election. We've got candidates reaching out across party lines and some voters reciprocating. That's an exciting dynamic. It's a healthy dynamic. These are voters who are putting patriotism ahead of partisanship. Well, I think it's partly a function of the, the polarization of American politics. It's being reflected in the media and the newspapers in particular. And I think when, when editorial pages seem to be hijacked by one side or the other, people turn off because it's predictable. And they resent that. They want more independence in their media well, coverage. You're telling me that. Politics is history in the present tense, and never more so than today. Barack Obama, third African-American center since Reconstruction, gaining the Democratic nomination. Forty years ago today, Bobby Kennedy won California and then was assassinated. And Barack Obama has inspired and united uh, people in a way that was reminiscent of Bobby Kennedy. This is a historic day. You're seeing the bomb momentum continue from Wyoming through Mississippi. Now he's 13 and 30 in terms of states. <laughs> And it indicates also that Hillary Clinton doesn't have that kind of enthusiastic support. And I think a lot of the youth support that's supporting Obama is non-transferable to Hillary. It's not an anti-Bush vote. It's not about the Democratic Party. It's about Barack Obama. Yeah. Early in the primary, both these two candidates started running against traditional partisanship. They started pledging to end hyper-partisanship in Washington. And that's one of the things that helped them break through. They were appealing to Democrats, Republicans, and independents. And they ran, in some cases, against the establishment of their own parties. So you've got a very unique circumstance where Obama and McCain has a lot of credibility with independent voters and crossover voters. The polls show a smaller than expected bump, but a bump that's coming. And in the swing states where Obama's pulling away, there's something also important. There's a generational gap that's going. Voters under 50, the younger you are, the more like you are to vote for Obama. Conservative activists should find comfort in this fact alone from John McCain. They need to remember that he's running ahead of the Republican brand because of his independence, not in spite of it. The novelty may have worn off and after they getting the vote in 1972. They may have been impacted by cynicism after Watergate and the Carter years. But the reality is, is, is that young people are feeling engaged today. They need to make that extra effort to vote on election day. Democracy is determined by those who show up. What's really exciting right now is that independents and swing voters like both of them equally. There's a sense that both these men are independent. John McCain's got a decade of credibility reaching across the aisle. Barack Obama's made it the hallmark of his candidacy since he first appeared on the stage in 04 about saying there's not a liberal right. America or a conservative America, there's the United States of America. I'm telling you, man, you got the, I'm feeling your passion. And again, it's unusual to hear someone whose position is you know, both sides have something to offer, let's come up with an interesting compromise, come at you with fury. That's, you know, these uh, uh, cable shows, their, their stock and trade, their chum is not reasoned debate. Chef, thanks. It looks to me like you made a good-sized search to find that guy, John Avalon, and found a guy that looks a lot like you.